What does a balloon and a race car have in common? They're both being acted on by forces. This is all about the forces of the universe. Forces are probably one of the largest but least recognized parts of everyday life. Are you ready? Let's go exploring. time and today we have some fun experiments to help you digest what I explain. Newton's laws. Inertia. Inertia means that if an object is at rest, to say this, and there are no forces acting on it, say it's in space, it'll keep staying at rest. It won't move. But if I throw it in space, it's moving and so it will keep moving. And me throwing it is a force acting on it. So I have a demonstration. So here you can see that there is a card and then a coin. I will flick the card and the card should go away. And friction should keep the coin on the card, right? But the coin has its inertia. So it might fall down, right? Its inertia will stop it from moving. Or will it go with the coin? Let's find out. Three, two, one. And that was not supposed to happen, but the coin went in the glass and the card flew away. Anyways, so the second, Newton's second law means changes in momentum are proportional to forces. So momentum is mass times velocity. So if this really heavy ball is moving at a meter per second, this is not one meter per second, then it will have a high momentum. But if this really light one is moving at a meter per second, it will have a low momentum because it's so light. So I have an experiment. So first I'll put this heavy ball on top of the light ball. And because it's heavier, the heavy ball should bounce at less than like just a tiny bit. Okay, let's find out. So what happened was the heavy ball hit the light ball and bounced a tiny bit while it hit the light ball slightly off center and the light ball flew away this way. But what happens if the light ball is on top? Since it's light, it should bounce up higher than it was dropped from. And hope you saw that. And now let's do the ultimate. Oh my god, where did that go? And anyway... Newton's third law says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So I'm going to blow up this balloon, then there will be a high pressure. And when I open it, then there's high pressure here, low pressure here, air is shooting out. And then the reaction is the balloon will move. So... That should be enough. And three, two, one. And in case you didn't see that, the balloon flew away in that direction. Well, the gases inside the balloon flew away in this direction. So, yeah, this is also called conservation of momentum and stuff. And conservation of energy. Anyways, the four fundamental forces. One, gravity. Everything with mass. This has mass. This has mass. Everything has mass except for light and stuff. So, uh, they, they gravitate or move towards each other. Gravity is a very weak force. It's so weak that if I have two objects, both of these are kind of relatively heavy, and I put them here, because... Okay, that was... They're not supposed to roll. Okay, there we go. And they're not moving towards each other. But the gravity of the Earth... I mean, you can kind of see for yourself. The gravity of the Earth is pulling it down. That's because the Earth is so huge. Anyway, gravity is immeasurable at small, like, atomic scales, but it's huge at planetary scales. You know, 
I'm I'm not flying up and down to space when they jump. And so anyways, dude, the weak force. The weak force only applies at really tiny scales. And it's the second weakest force after gravity. So basically, there's a particle called a proton. And then when the weak force happens, a weak interaction, it will turn into a heavier particle. Heavy? No, sorry. There's a neutron. It will turn into a lighter particle called a proton, releasing a W and a Z boson, or a Z boson, and then this will decay into other stuff. So a neutron turns into a proton and some other really light stuff. The electromagnetic force. If two objects are charged, there's a force between them. Two magnets, force. Like charges with like charges repel, unlike, so different charges attract. And the connection between electricity and magnetism was discovered in 1820 by Hans Christian, who was still a Danish scientist. Electromagnetism is the second strongest force. Four, the strong force. That's actually what it's called. The strong force holds atoms together. It also gives mass to protons and neutrons. It's the strongest of all the forces. But it only has effect on ranges of zero point this number meters. It's carried by gluons and mesons, which are some other particles. And so basically, if you have two quarks, the, those are some particles, and you try to pull them apart, then it's a very strong force trying to keep them together. But if you pull enough, then the rubber band will snap and will create two more quarks because of the energy you put in. And then you'll have two pairs of quarks. And you'll be no farther in your attempt to pull them apart. And with all about friction. Intro. Friction is a force made when two objects, say this and this, come into contact. It works when bumps in the objects get stuck. The object then only moves if the bump is broken or slid over. Static friction. This happens when objects are moving, like the stable isn't moving relative to the other object, the floor. And so anyways, when you, when you push hard on a still object, there's a friction. When you push harder, the friction goes up. Then it will reach a maximum and the object will start moving. And static friction is what stops this table from moving when I push lightly. See, I'm pushing. I'm actually pushing and it's not moving. That's static friction. Kinetic friction. This happens when objects are moving. This can be because of chemical bonds, not rather than bumps. This stops a rolling baseball. It's usually weaker than static friction. Rolling friction, like this car, is even weaker than, you know, sliding friction. So I attempt to show you, or not show you that, but I attempt to show you friction right here. So right now I'm going to pull this side up a bit and it's up a bit. So there's a small force acting on this car, but the friction stops the car from moving. When I, when I pull it a bit higher, the car will start moving and then rolling friction will stop it. And here we go. And will stop because it hit something, but now you can see it stops. That's rolling friction. And now it's playtime. So today I am going to use a game called Kerbal Space Program on my computer to show you all about these forces. So it's kind of like more experience, except it's not analog, it's digital. So Kerbal Space Program, which you can see here, is a game where you can build rockets and then test them. And I'm going to show how forces act on rockets and how they can act on everyday things. So here, I'm going to build a rocket quickly and then you're going to see. So I take this so I can control it. Take a parachute, very important. Take a... And so taking my heat shield, and then I'm gonna put some fuel tanks, just wait. And fuel tanks, I'm gonna take this, FLT 800, should be fine. 
And now an engine. I'm gonna take a very powerful engine. Oh my god, that engine is too powerful. Anyways, okay, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. And. Okay, oopsies. And launch. So, first I'm going to show you about Newton's laws, gravity, and then friction. Oh, and the strong force. First the strong force. So, wait for it to load. And... So, as you can see, the rocket isn't instantly molecularly disintegrating. It hasn't even started moving yet. But that's because of the strong force holding it together. Yay! And so, when I launch, you should see the rocket engine throwing some hot gases out. And I want you to watch very carefully to see if you can happen when it starts doing that. Okay? Okay. And three, two, one, go. So I'm guessing you saw that. It went 77 meters a second in like five seconds. So the so that was Newton's third law, throwing hot gases out, going the other way. And now the second law, changes in momentum are proportional to forces. Okay, well, first gravity. So it, it's being slowed down by gravity. And then the second law, Newton's second law. Now I'm doing only a little bit of throttle. And you can see it isn't going up as fast. And friction is also slowing it down, which you're going to see any second now. So right now the rocket is really going up fast. And you can just watch it and you can see an air go coming because of the friction. And I'm going to throttle down so my rocket doesn't explode. And anyway, it's a very fast rocket. And heading up, heading up. Okay, and now I'm just going to go full. Yeah, that's enough. And now you can see the red. That's friction, making it heat up. I forgot to say, friction can make it heat up. But friction, drag, or air friction, is also used in something normally called parachutes. So... We're gonna adjust the parachute a bit. Anyways, we're gonna go into map mode. This rocket is gonna go a hundred kilometers high and a bit. So now it's just heading up and we're gonna wait a bit. It's heading up, it's speed, friction is slowing it down, gravity is slowing it down, and it's kind of in orbit. Then when it comes down, I'm going to spread my parachute, and the drag should slow it down considerably. After speeding up the waiting time, now we're back, and I'm just entering the atmosphere. I have a heat shield, which should slow me down, and you'll see the friction starting to slow me down in a couple seconds. And gravity is still speeding me up, but the friction should start outweighing the gravity. I just armed my parachute. And now it should start to slow down any second now. Let's see if it gets to one kilometer a second. 980, 990, yeah, that's one kilometer a second. Now it's going to start slowing down. Any moment. Now it's starting to, yep, and you can see the heat, and it's really slowing down. Yeah, it's starting to slow down a bit. You can see the heat. Lucky we have a heat shield. And, and so the parachute will soon inflate. And what that will do is the drag should slow it down, and we should, should achieve a safe landing. was that and I just heard some explosions I don't know what those were because my rocket is still fine oh I know I know I discarded I discarded the engine and the fuel tanks earlier that must have gone boom boom now my parachute has just engaged 
and it's a bit small right now and friction from friction or drag is slowing me down and I'm after speeding up the waiting time a bit the parachute is inflating and we're slowing down considerably because of the friction and now I'm just gonna warp a bit so we're going at a nice and comfortable six meters a second and the shadow has appeared we see a shadow and so I'm just warping right now and now we should land soon and a hundred meters, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, landing. I hope you enjoyed that short play about rockets and how it works. It's time for 10 under 10, which should be 10 around 10, because now I'm 10. Sad. Okay, so if you throw something like this in space, it flies away forever because of inertia. After you throw it, you move slowly backwards because of Newton's third law, because of reaction. Friction, static friction is caused by bumps, that's why the stable is not moving when I push. Ugh. Anyways, um, friction can also be caused by chemical bonds when something is moving. So right now there are chemical bonds forming between this and the table. And that's why it stops when I let go. So gravity is very, very, very weak. Like, I mean, let me just give an example. If you have this long force, you have two quarks, which are, which is like this size, the point, like 20 zeros, like, yeah. And then if you have, so the gravity between those two quarks would be so small, it's immeasurable. But the force pulling them together because of the strong force is 10,000 newtons, which means if you have like five cars, it would move, it would, in space, it would accelerate those five cars at one meter a second. Like, all of those five cars would be accelerating because of one, this size, but, so gravity is really weak. Electromagnetism, the connection between electricity and magnetism, was discovered by Hans Christian Oersted. It was discovered in kind of reverse, like, like, so... The connection between electricity and magnetism was discovered by H.C. Erskine. The connection between the reverse connection between magnetism and electricity was discovered by Michael Faraday. Friction builds up lots of heat. You saw that with the rockets. Static friction is stronger than kinetic friction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Remember the balloon? It's time for magic resources. So what we have is, as our book, we have Particle Physics Brick by Brick. Showing diagrams using Lego, a very fun toy. Showing, showing pictures, diagrams, and actual Feynman diagrams like here, which, which professionals use. This is the best if you want to learn about particle physics. And I included it because the weak force and the strong force both only apply at particular scales. Then the second one I've already talked about in the units of measurement episode. It's the Big Fat Notebook of Science. Uh, everything you need to ace science in middle school, I call it the Big Fat Science Notebook. And the third one is Kerbal Space Program. You can get it on Steam and some other places. And, well, yeah, have fun with rockets 
and space planes. We have not only rockets, there are also space planes. It is the end of another episode, which means that you will hit the you will subscribe and hit the bell if you can. And what else you will you will do is you will be left on a happy note because of this joke. I love this joke. What kind of tree contains every known element? I bet you could never guess this. A chemistry. Get it? Chemistry? Elements? Chemistry? Okay, so anyways. And remember, you are never too young to explore.